I have been testing my soil from the very beginning of my garden journey, and I love the results that it gives me, specifically when it comes to my garden's pH. Many times the nutrients are all in balance just fine, but it's the pH that's a little off and that can make a big difference in the growth of my plants. So the thought occurred to me, is there a way that I could test just my soil's pH without having to buy a soil test using what I have on hand? Well, I thought, why not? Let's test it and see the results. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking a soil sample from a raised bed behind me. This bed is relatively new, just a couple of years old. I've continued to add organic matter to it, and so I'm really not worried about the nutrient portion of it. Everything's growing just fine that I've planted so far, but this next season I plan on planting beets in that bed, and beets in particular are a little bit sensitive to pH. They really like a higher pH between six and a half and seven. Seven is neutral, and I typically have in my garden more acidic soil, more like a six pH is I think the last time I checked my soil. And a lot of garden plants do just fine with that pH, um, such as sweet potatoes and tomatoes that I have planted in this bed. But with beets, I really need it a little bit higher. So my question is, do I need to add some lime to that bed over the fall to get ready for planting beets next spring? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a soil sample and I'm going to use a method from this book, uh, Garden Alchemy uh, by Stephanie Rose. It has lots of great DIY projects. This is great for you if you're wanting to save some money and do some things yourself. But I'm gonna be following her instructions here on trying to determine whether the soil in this bed is alkaline, which means a higher number on the pH scale or acidic, which is a lower number. And then I'm gonna take that same soil sample and I'm gonna send it off with soil kit to be tested in a lab. Now, I love using soil kit for any kind of uh, garden testing that I do, especially when it comes to when I wanna know what kind of nutrient density I have with my soil. Uh, obviously, it does pH. It also calculates organic matter, which is something not all laboratory soil tests do, and that is a really good thing to know, how is my organic matter. Now, Personally, uh, like I said, I'm not worried about the nutrients and I'm really not worried about the organic matter because this bed has a lot of compost already. It'll still be fun to see the difference, but mostly I want to test what I get with this home pH test against the laboratory results. So let's do the home pH test here, see what we find, and then I'll send off for the official soil kit test. And in a few days when we get the results back, we'll compare the two. I just harvested sweet potatoes out of this bed this weekend, so the soil is ready for me to take a sample from. Fall is a great time to do a soil test no matter what garden space you have because if you do find out that the pH is out of balance in particular, then you have time to add what you need, whether that's lime if it's too acidic or uh, sulfur if it's too alkaline. And so this is a really... Oh, I'm, there's a toad, did you see that? I have so many toads in the garden. Those are garden good guys, but sometimes they can make you jumpy if, if they come out of nowhere. Okay, so I'm gonna take probably about four samples here. If you notice that I uh, raked aside any organic matter on top, such as uh, pine needles or mulch or anything like that, you wanna rake that aside. You really just wanna get to the top soil. And I'm gonna dig down to about four inches here and put that in the jar. I'll do it over here too. If you're doing a larger space, you need to take more than four samples, but with this small bed and considering it's really the same, same soil that I filled it with, I am just gonna do four. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna put aside the soil kit for now. I'm gonna come back to that. But for right now, I want to do the soil test. I've got distilled white vinegar and I've got baking soda and then uh, distilled water. It's important to use distilled water because it has a neutral pH and we don't want anything to affect the results. So we've got some distilled water here. And then I've got a little measuring cup and a spoon and two bowls. 
I'm going to put two tablespoons of soil into each bowl. The next thing I want to measure out is one tablespoon of white vinegar. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to add the one tablespoon of vinegar into this soil to see if it fizzes. Now, I never actually took chemistry in high school. I know my son's in it right now, so maybe he can teach me a little bit about this. But something about the vinegar in relation to the pH of the soil is supposed to make it fizz if it is alkaline, if the pH is over seven. So let's check it out and see. See any fizz? I don't even think I can have to stir this. I see no fizz whatsoever. So apparently my soil is not alkaline, which doesn't surprise me in the least. I don't think I've really ever had, I've only had one alkaline soil test and that was in a random raised bed. But let's see next if it is actually acidic. Okay, in this case, we want to add one tablespoon of distilled water and I'm just gonna rinse this container out so that we don't have any leftover vinegar there. So I'm rinsing that out. I will measure out the distilled water here to one tablespoon and then we'll mix that into the soil. Okay, so the next step is to add a tablespoon of baking soda to this and see if it fizzes. Let's see if that makes any difference when we add that. I see some fizzing. I have to look real close. It's a tiny bit. It's not super noticeable, but yeah, you see those bubbles? That's pretty cool. Okay, so that was fun. I did see some fizz with the baking soda, so that means that the soil is acidic. The question is, I don't know how acidic. If you look at pH, seven is neutral. Beets can grow between six and a half and seven. So that was a little bit of fizz, but how acidic is it? I just don't know. So what I'll do is I'm going to compare it to the soil kit soil test and see what precisely that tells me. One thing that I have learned, although I can't explain it, is that pH is logarithmic, which means that going down or up on pH isn't equal. It is exponentially different depending on the side. It's going to make a huge difference with each point. So I don't know how acidic this is, but I guess the good thing is, is it did rule out alkaline altogether. I would be curious about if I took an area in my garden that I knew was acidic, would it fizz more? I may try that. But for now, I wanna test this against the soil kit laboratory test. So I'm gonna take the rest of the soil sample that I got and I'm going to send it off to soil kit. Now, what I love about soil kit is it's so easy. You order the soil kit from them, they send you this box. And then inside the box, you have a, a self-addressed sealed envelope that you just put, put your soil sample in, you mail it off, you register it online, and they email you the results. It's super easy, super fast, and it even comes with simple one-card instructions. I've been using Soil Kit for several years. Anytime I want my soil tested, this is what I use now. So this is a soil sample bag and it actually says, do not fill past this line. So that's how I'm gonna fill it. That worked out about perfectly. Scan the QR code and register the Soil Kit. Then I'll put it in here and put it in the mail. And now I just have to wait a few days for the results and then I'll be back here with you and we will compare the Soil Kit soil test results to my home test. I got my soil kit soil test results in in just a few days and I have to say I am very surprised. As expected, I did find that this soil that I'm planning to plant beets in is acidic, but what surprised me is how acidic it is. It's showing a 5.4 pH, which is very low. Beets need between six and a half to seven. So I'm really glad that I tested this so that I know that I've got to do something over the fall and winter to bring that pH up. But 
The other thing that I learned from the soil test is something that I wasn't able to find out in the home test that we just did. And that is not only is the pH of 5.4, but it has a buffer pH of 7.05. Now I'm not gonna pretend I know all about what that means, but from what I could understand, it basically means that it's going to require a little bit more lime to actually get it up to where it needs to be than if it had a lower buffer pH. And the reason why this is important is because Soil Kit does the work for me, so it tells me exactly how much I need to add. Based on the buffer pH and also based on the cation exchange capacity, which is another term that I can't adequately explain. But those two numbers, if they fluctuate any, will vary as far as how much lime I need to apply to get this pH up for growing beets. So I'm really glad that I actually did this test for several reasons. Number one, I needed to know that this pH was super low. Even though the home test told me it was acidic, I didn't know how acidic. I didn't realize that it was this bad. And so if I hadn't have done that, I would have just put some lime on it and thought it would have been good. But the soil kit soil test tells me exactly how much to put on there. Another thing that it told me is that my organic matter is 25%, which is very high. You want at least a 5% organic matter, most experts will say. So 25% is very high, very good. Um, but I was really kind of surprised that it was that high. And then finally, it gave me levels on my nutrients and as expected, Almost all of my nutrients are either in the high or very high category with the exception of potassium. Potassium, I have a medium amount in the soil. And that's really good to know because potassium is really important for root crop development and in all crop development, honestly. But another thing this tells me is that one thing I like to do over the winter time is we have a fireplace and so I do spread the ashes on my garden. Ashes are very alkaline, so that will help the pH, but ashes are also high in potassium. So that would mean that this bed would be a perfect place for me to add some of those ashes from my fireplace, especially if I'm wanting to raise the pH and the potassium both. But along with that, I discovered I'm high in phosphorus, I'm high in magnesium, I'm high in a lot of things. And so this tells me that I don't need to be going and adding any like major all-purpose fertilizer because I don't need any more of those other elements. So all that to say, this was very informative and I'm very glad that I did the soil test so that I can know how to best amend my soil, what ingredients to use and what ingredients not to use, especially in this bed. The big question is then, is that home soil test worth doing? I think that we have learned that it is helpful as far as deciding, do you have an alkaline soil or do you have a neutral soil or do you have an acidic soil? But that's where it starts because if you do determine, like I did, that I have acidic soil, it doesn't tell you how acidic it is. And so with that said, you don't know if it's extremely acidic, if it's mildly acidic. I didn't know how much lime I would need to add based on the home soil test. Now I could just go and add what I think is best, but that's really not the way that we wanna do things like this, especially when it comes to the pH in our gardens. It's really important to get that right. So all that to say, I think it has its place. It's a good starting point, but to actually know where your soil is in terms of pH, which is really important, I think a soil test is the way to go. And I enjoy Soil Kit, but you can also use your local cooperative extension service. I know in my state, Arkansas, it's still free, so that's a great option if you live in Arkansas. But if you don't live in a place where that is free, I do recommend that you look into Soil Kit, at least so you know what your soil needs and what it doesn't. One thing I love about Soil Kit is that they give you recommendations. They tell you exactly how much of everything to apply. But if you get a soil test somewhere else and all you get is a report with a bunch of numbers that make no sense to you, then you might be interested in listening to episode number 241 of the Beginner's Garden podcast, where I interview Joey Akins from Penn State Extension Service. In this episode, he helps us understand how to read a soil test. So if you're interested in that, check out that episode at the Beginner's Garden Podcast. And if you like what you learned today and you want more, comment below and tell me if there are other experiments you would like me to do in my garden to share with you like I did in this one. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next video.